No one's going on all fours and drinking the fountain like a dog. Bro, what? <laughs> We're going to be checking out seven things I've never seen before I came to the USA. Yeah, interested to see what we got with this one. So yeah, let's jump straight to this and check this out, man. Dude, look at this. I have a checkbook. I feel so sophisticated now. Yeah, you're going to need it to pay all your bills. I don't get it. What's so cool about that? I've never seen a check before. That's crazy. Like I've actually seen one before because my dad used to have one, but they're definitely not common in the UK now. And yeah, that's crazy. That Americans like use them a lot still. It's like in the old movies. <laughs> Are they actually still used everywhere today? Now let's get to the topic of today's video. With my friend and my parents visiting from Germany recently, I was kind of reminded of all of the everyday things that are different here that I don't even really notice anymore right, after okay. all this time. Like I found myself explaining things like, no, we don't need to return the shopping cart back to the store here because American stores usually have these cart return stations in the parking lot, which a few years ago were all- Oh wait, no, we have, wait, they don't have that in Germany? I was thinking, what do you mean? What, you just leave it in the street? No, yeah, we, we have that in the UK. You just pull it, like, there's so many in between car parking spots. Things that people had to explain to me when I first came here because there were a lot of oh, things wow. that I had literally never seen before. And that's why today I want to share seven of them. Yo, Germany, they're really handy. You guys should definitely get them. Because it just saves you walking all the way back to the shop. There's things with you that I had never seen before I came to the US. Now, I have made a video with this title before, and I covered some major things in that. So make sure to watch that if you haven't seen it Yeah, we've already checked yet. that one out. Up here and down below. But of course, there are a few more things on that list that I'll tell you about now, starting with ads for prescription medication. <laughs> yeah. Yo, so I always I find this one crazy, man. I ain't gonna lie, this is mad. And thankfully, you guys think it's mad as well. You guys have came over into my stream and we spoke about it and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like business wars with adverts and stuff. Like, like yeah, for drugs and whatnot. Crazy. I was watching TV in the US and suddenly saw an ad for a diabetes medication. I was totally caught off guard because even though I was used to ads for aspirin or wound healing creams, I had never in my life seen an ad for a medication treating a serious illness like this. Trulicity is an injection to improve blood sugar in adults with type 2 diabetes when used with diet and exercise. Ask your doctor about once weekly Trulicity. To me, it See, this is dodgy to me. Should I tell you why, right? Because if you're ill, you go to doctors and they'll prescribe you with what you need, right? Whereas this advert kind of thing, how can you trust it? Because they're going to be telling you all this so they get the business, but it might not be the best for you, you know what I mean? It kind of felt out of place to see that in the middle of a comedy movie, <laughs> and it almost made it seem somewhat untrustworthy in a way. Like, my first thought was that this isn't something that you should advertise for, as in, oh, look at me, I'm laughing with my family in slow-mo while holding the medication into the camera. Like, I felt like this should be a decision that you make based on evidence and depending on whether your doctors think that this could actually help you. Now, the reason why this was so odd for me is that in Germany, and in fact, almost the entire... Yo, you know what? Maybe you do it that way because to go to the doctors, you guys have to pay for medical, right? So maybe you just self-diagnose yourself so you don't have to pay the medical bill and then you just get the... App. Oh my God. Boom, big brain. In our world, advertising prescription drugs to consumers is actually illegal. In Germany, yeah, it's this is regulated well. in the so-called Arzneimittelgesetz, the German drug ah. law. Only two countries in the ah. world regulated in the so-called Arzneimittelgesetz. Arzneimittelgesetz. As nice as it gets. It's the German drug law. Only two countries in the world actually allow this. The US and New Zealand. And there was, and oh, wow. sometimes still is, a big discussion about this here in the US, but they did end up making prescription drug ads legal in print media in the 1980s and for radio and TV in 1997. If you want to learn more about this whole topic and the details of these regulations, check out this really interesting video by Vox. It gives a really great summary, so I'll just put the link for you in the info box. Yeah, I don't know if this is true, but apparently, like, the drug adverts are actually like a lot <laughs> like you get them a lot like i think someone said like you would get like seven and ad no no seven and ad breaks way too much maybe seven an hour 
Yeah, maybe seven an hour. Now, even though I said that seeing know, these ads felt ad somewhat inappropriate to me, and still does a little, this is really a discussion with a good number of arguments on the pro side as well. It might motivate people to even go to the doctor about their health complaints, for example. So there are really pros and cons in this discussion. One thing that's safe to say, though, is that it can be really funny when more than half of the ad is dedicated to nothing but possible risks and side effects of the drug. <laughs> Some people have had changes in behavior, hostility, agitation, depressed mood, and suicidal thoughts or actions while taking or after stopping chat. If you notice agitation, hostility, depression, or changes in behavior, thinking or mood that are not typical for you, or if you develop suicidal thoughts or actions, stop taking chat. Oh, wow. Talk to your doctor about any history of depression or other mental health problems, which can get worse while taking chat. Yeah, nah, I ain't gonna lie. I'm just muting. Yeah, if, if I'm an American and it's come on, boom, mute. Some people can have allergic or serious skin reactions to Chattix, some of which can be life-threatening. If you notice swelling of face, mouth, throat, or a rash, stop taking Chattix and see your doctor right away. Tell your doctor which medicines you're taking as they may work differently when you quit smoking. Chattix dosing may be different if you have kidney problems. The most common side effect is nausea. Patients Jesus, also report sleeping and vivid unusual or strange dreams. Until you know how Chattix may affect you, use caution when driving or operating machinery. Chattix should not be taken with other quit smoking products. Yo, listen, I know this is an advert for Chantix, right? But, yo, Chantix. You're making me not want it. You're making you're supposed to make me want it, right? I don't want it now. <laughs> well, I didn't want it anyway, but wait, more ads? We're gonna stay on this whole ad topic for just a little bit longer because another thing that was completely new to me was seeing regional ads even when watching a nationwide channel. Now, of course, this is something it. that's completely normal to see on social media and when streaming things on Hulu or here on YouTube nowadays. Everyone is being shown different ads on the internet. Tailored and part of ads. that is that you might see ads that are targeted specifically at your city or a general region. Like about Do you know what is crazy, right? This is crazy. And it's probably happened to you lot before. Have you ever just spoke about something? You've not searched it. You've not entered it on the internet or whatnot. You've just spoke maybe to your partner. I don't know, for example, um, I really need a hedge cutter. Right? I guarantee you, if I mention it a couple of times, and I go on social media or whatnot, a hedge cutter will come up. I, bro, it's happened so many times. I've mentioned like the most random thing with my phone around, and then boom, I'm getting adverts for it. Like what? It's mad. About an upcoming concert, for example, or a local business. But on TV, this is just not something that's common in Germany. Almost all of our TV channels in Germany are nationwide channels. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that they show different ads to different regions. Like, I'm pretty sure that every German viewer gets the exact same ads. Now, we do have right. regional channels and regional windows where there's like a one hour. Yeah, in the UK, it's not regional. I'm pretty sure it's not. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just like just set ads slot that's going to be specific to you but it makes sense that america is regional because america is that big not every state is the same you know what i mean where's that like in the uk is that it's so small kind of the adverts are kind of for all of them you know what i mean whereas that like in america is that big there might be an advert for stores that's on the east coast not the west coast or vice versa so. your area but that's really the minority of all of our tv channels in germany that now it does sense. make sense that it would be a little different in the u.s given how big this country is yeah. i mean the continental u.s has four different time zones so when scheduling TV programs they have to put different times on the announcements eastern and pacific time usually oh, we also wow. often see them list eastern and central time around here and then sometimes they actually rebroadcast things later for the people in the mountain and pacific time zones so as you can tell the size of this country already makes broadcasting a way different experience and seeing regional ads even when watching a big national show is part of that i specifically remember when i came to the u.s in august of 2016 shortly before the elections in november i saw a lot of political campaigns for local candidates and at first i was like oh this person's from ohio i'm yo that would be cool you know because i've never actually seen one like in the uk this doesn't happen do you know what i mean you'll never go on tv and you'll never see like an advert for like a political campaign or whatnot where well i don't think you do i'm pretty sure you don't but like imagine like just sitting down and just seeing like donald trump or obama or whatnot just like doing a campaign but that'd be cool in ohio what are the odds and there are a lot of election ads in the u.s compared to germany even on regional and city levels but that's a different topic Flavored coffee Let's creamer. Let's move on to something much more enjoyable that was not a thing that I was familiar with growing up in Germany. Right. And that is 
flavored coffee creamer. So this stuff. I remember huh? on our first USA road trip that we did as a family in 2011, they had these coffee machines in all of the hotel lobbies where they had coffee and then they'd also have a dispenser like this one that would have regular creamer, but also Never seen vanilla it. and hazelnut flavored creamer. And guys, I don't drink coffee. I don't like it. It doesn't wake me up. But on that vacation, 17 year old me definitely had some coffee every now and then. Nah, America. Should we do it? Should we do it? Should we ban her from entering? <laughs> How do you not like coffee? Oh, coffee's so good, man. Because with that sweet vanilla creamer in it, it didn't even taste like coffee anymore. Oh, it tasted I... like dessert. Of course, I kind of overdid it with the creamer, but if you look at the coffee culture in the US, there's... Oh, so is, is creamer like pretty much like syrup? Because we have like syrup and stuff in our coffee. Definitely lots of sweetness and flavors. And this even starts with the coffee grounds. When you look at the coffee selection at a German grocery store, you'll kind of just have coffee. I mean, there will be different roasts and strengths. Right, And yeah. there will be regular coffee and espresso, but it's very straightforward. Whereas in the US, your coffee aisle usually looks more like this. Even the coffee grounds often come with a flavor. And from what I've experienced huh? here, it's not very common to put regular milk oh, in wow. your coffee, but it's usually coffee creamer, often flavored creamer. And we do have unflavored creamer in Germany as well. Oh, you Americans are doing it so good. Uh, oh, bro, how many different flavors of coffee? <laughs> coffee's on it, but I feel like it's just as common to use regular milk or whatever milk substitute oh, wow. you prefer. But flavored creamer is not something I've ever seen in Germany. Yeah, we don't have it here. So you use flavored creamer instead of milk? Yeah, we just use regular milk. Again, oh, what did I say? Not something I've ever seen in Germany. Sweet cream cheese. Oh, wait, sweet cheese? Again, oh. we're kind of staying on a similar topic, and this is something that I hadn't even thought about in years. But when my friend was here a few weeks ago, she saw this in our fridge and she just couldn't wrap her head around the fact that this even existed. Sweet cream cheese. In Germany, cream cheese is something uh, savory that we eat on. No, wait, no, no, no. You get brown sugar and cinnamon cheese? Philadelphia cheese? Yo, Philadelphia is really good, but not. <laughs> Bro, what is this? Strawberry tea? Ugh. <laughs> I feel sick. Yo, I feel sick, bro. Sweet cream cheese. In Germany... Yo, you gotta let me know down in the comment section. Do you guys have this? And this is it actually nice? I can't imagine, like, cheese with, like, a strawberry... Fl oh, no. Cream cheese is something savory that we eat on bread or knäckebrot or maybe with pretzels. And to be completely honest with you, our cream cheese game is kind of on a whole different level compared to the US. We have lots of different flavors, different textures or whipping degrees and lots of different brands. While in the US, it seems like Philadelphia pretty much has the cream cheese monopoly nowadays. Well, Philadelphia is but really good. But what we don't have in Germany is blueberry flavored cream cheese oh, or honey pecan no, or that's strawberry gross. or cinnamon. Yo, Those are very common in the US. That is Plus, gross. I've realized that cream cheese is something that's mainly used for baking. No, America, what? <laughs> that can't be good. Surely that does not taste good, bro. Blueberry cheese, strawberry cheese. Oh, I don't know. You guys got to let me down. She's saying it's very common. So I'm like, I'm guessing that you guys are having that. But no, I, I don't believe it. You guys got to let me know down below if you ever have it, if you have it a lot, whatnot. Is it actually good? It might be one of those things that sound really gross, but actually tastes good. Because I like strawberries. I like I like cream cheese, but ugh, I can't imagine it too. Baking and cooking here or for eating on a bagel, which of course is something that we oh, don't bagel, really have either yeah. in Germany. I mean, we have all of our bread and bread rolls and you can find bagels in Germany if you look for them, but they're not really a popular thing. Mm? Like you won't find bagels at a regular German bakery. And huh? at least in Munich, I can't think of a bagel shop or anything like that. I'm sure they exist somewhere, but oh, bagels I don't are so remember good. ever seeing one. In the US though- No wonder like they have of a popular brand that is in Philadelphia, because Philadelphia and bagels, oh. Bagels are sacred, especially in New York, and bagels are what you put your cream cheese on. Right. I remember that my American roommates gave me a really weird look one time during my first few months here because I put cream cheese on a slice of toast. Even Ben thinks that this no, is that's weird nice, to though. this day, which I don't understand at all. I mean, a bagel is just another type of bread. No. Yeah, nah, the cream cheese on toast as well also does bang. That is nice as well. 
if you, if you don't have it, fair enough, whatever, right? But it does bang. And it's easier than a bagel. It's like, it's like more thinner. It, it, it's like if you're not that hungry, right? It's cream cheese toast, boom. Bagel is if you're really hungry. Bagels are thin. Of course, there are savory bagels that people eat with plain cream cheese or onion or garden vegetable cream cheese and maybe some egg, cheese and bacon. But you also have your cinnamon bagels or blueberry bagels with blueberry cream cheese. To be honest, oh. I don't really know what combinations people like the most. Yo, we need to come off this cheese, bro. This is making me feel sick. <laughs> This is making me feel sick with all these flavors, man. I'm still not really into sweet cream cheese, except for the honey pecan one. That one's really good, but I don't exclusively put that on bagels. So maybe you guys could share your favorite sweet bagel combos in the comments. None. Listen, it might be one of those things that tastes good, but like all I can get in my head is like rotten chicken. <laughs> Like the taste was just be, like be oh, I don't know I don't know man I don't know maybe when I set up my PO box one of you guys will send me some sweet cheese and I could try it and stuff but yeah I I, I can't promise anything. Water fountains. The next item is something that you'll notice as soon as you get off the plane in the U.S. because you'll see them at airports, malls, public parks, right. schools, really everywhere. But I had never seen one in my entire life in Germany. Huh? Water fountains. Oh, I thought she meant like actual water fountains, like outdoors. You know, like the, <laughs> you know, like when you go outside and you got like that big, like it could be a statue or like a, let's say like a mermaid that's like spitting water out. You know what I mean? But these, she's never ever seen these before. They're not that common in the UK, but there's de they're definitely around. Like, like mainly places like gyms, you see one in every gym, uh, fitness location, just certain areas. You know what I mean? You see these, but they're not like crazy common to me they were one of those things that i had only seen in american cartoons and movies oh, wow. especially when they took Germany place have in a them. school setting like in disney's recess for example or lizzie oh, mcguire so or kim possible i remember that there was always a scene where kids messed with the water fountain so that the next one who uses it would get water all over them but i always thought it was kind of a weird concept to bend down to a little faucet to drink out of it like a dog instead of having a water bottle to drink out of to be completely honest i still don't really like doing Yo, she just said bend down and drink it like a dog. If I had more room in this setup, I would do it at Zampo. No one's going on all fours and drinking the fountain like a dog. Bro, what? How big are your fountains, bro? You might like, you might have to like lean over a little bit press it but no one's looking like a dog doing that or maybe i'm just not talented enough to drink out of them without getting half of my face wet what i do really <laughs> like though is when there's also a little station specifically for filling up your water bottle that's absolutely genius in my opinion i mean you can also fill up your bottle at a regular water fountain oh to be fair we had we um another place that these are really popular or was popular is schools there was quite a few in schools because you'd fill up your bottle with them Mountain, but it's just so much easier with those water filling stations. Now, you probably guessed it, but in Germany, water fountains aren't a thing. Instead, Crazy. at least that's what I always do, is that I just refill my water bottle with tap water, like in the public restroom, for example. We have really good tap. Oh, nah, bro. Nah, so you're, t oh. You're telling me whenever you're out, or like, let's say, let's take it back to schools. You're going into the toilets, restroom, whatever you want to call it, right? I'm filling up your butt. Bro, there's poo particles in the air. Oh, hell no. Tap water all over hell the country. No. And unlike tap water in a lot of regions of the US, like here in Cincinnati, it doesn't have that chlorine taste to it. So oh. it's really a great alternative. And I've personally never really felt like it's hard to find water in Germany. But I do see how having dedicated drinking fountains with filtered water that people can even use. Yeah, I'll stick to my filtered water drinking fountains. Cheers, though. <laughs> I don't want no pee particles in my bottle, man. Without having a bottle on them is probably a better solution. I'll pass. Those of you who've been watching my Checks. videos for a while have probably heard me talk about this more than enough, but it just has to be on this list because one thing I had definitely never seen before moving to the US They're cool. is a check. And to be my dad, uh, the only time I've really like, experienced checks and checkbooks is my dad's. 
um they're not common at all anymore now in the uk but they, they was cool like, I, would all, I would always like go in the chat book and like write myself a check for like a million pound or whatnot obviously i can't do anything with it but it was cool completely honest i didn't even realize that those were actually still a thing in the us i have talked about this topic in my video on money for what, example and in my video about everyday differences that surprised me in the us and i know that many americans like to respond to this by saying what no you're wrong about that we don't use checks in the us anymore i haven't seen one in like 20 years and of course you can definitely get around checks if you try to and there might be regional differences too like it's possible that they're more common here in the midwest and i'm not talking about people paying with checks at the grocery store but fact is when i first moved here my landlord wanted all of his tenants to pay rent via check and get this mail the check to him so you huh? write the check Put it wait, 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 but if she's done videos on this already and people in the comments are saying they don't do it Maybe it's just her one-off building. I don't know. Maybe that guy's just moving a bit differently. Maybe he only likes checks I don't know. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Do you guys still use checks that much? Cause I, I've, I don't really hear Many Americans using checks and I speak to quite a few Americans on like Twitch and stuff and whatnot and They've not really mentioned it, so <laughs> I don't know. Put it in an envelope and then send it via actual mail. So that was oh, definitely a culture that. shock for me because in Germany, it's common to pay rent and all of your bills via bank transfer. Yeah. And I came here under the impression that the US is a lot more advanced in regards to electronic payments and stuff like that. And this was kind of an issue for me because I didn't have an American bank account at the time. I can't imagine America just using checks. Nah, I think she's wrong with this. The, now that I think about it, I'll be, I'll be very surprised if you guys are using checks a lot. And therefore couldn't write checks myself. But this hasn't been my only encounter with checks. Since then, I've had several other landlords that wanted their rent via check. I received my own checkbook when I finally opened up an American bank account. I'm what? not showing it from the front because all my information is on it. I've been paid for freelancing work via check. More huh? than I have been paid via electronic payments. What? Is it this common? Sure, bro, surely not. Even by big institutions like the university, I've paid contractors via check, I've paid my taxes via check, and have received my tax refund from the government via check in the mail. And every time I've been to a production- Oh yeah, I've de I've re in the UK I've received checks before for like refunds and stuff by like big companies. That's still a thing like for a short film or for the Clio app, everyone in the crew would get an envelope with their check in it. A lot of Americans say that checks are so popular because of the skepticism towards online banking and because many people don't want others knowing their bank account number. Right. But I think in a lot of cases, it's also just convenience because bank transfers aren't always super easy in the US, especially if you don't have your bank account connected to a third party service like Zelle or PayPal. Long story huh? short, they're definitely a thing here. While in Germany, Checks haven't been a thing for Yo, America, what is your system right now? Like, what is your money system? Why is your money system sounding so complicated? Like, for example, if I want to send money, I could do it in seconds, right? I just log into my bank account. I just send to someone else's bank account that might be saved already in there. Boom, 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 boom. I'm out. Boom, 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 boom. Done. Sent. Instantly. Why? She's making it sound like you guys have to wait five business days. <laughs> Just send a check, they get it, put it in the bag, and they got the money. Wait, For what? a few decades now, I've never even seen the option to pay via check on a form or something. And I had quite literally never seen a check in my life. Mad. Screen doors, storm and the doors. The last item on oh, my okay. list of things yeah. that I had never That's seen before I came to the US is this. A screen door or yeah. storm door. The reason why this came... See, before watching these videos, I didn't... I didn't think that you guys had these, but after watching like your uh, weather videos in America and stuff, yeah, this makes sense. And I've seen quite a few of these. Your guys' weather is crazy, To my man. mind is that when my German friend stayed with us and asked what these are for, I didn't really have an answer, but it did remind me of how new these were to me when I first came here. For the longest time, I did realize that they had a little locking mechanism to keep them open, and I always thought that this was so annoying that when you needed it to stay open for a while, like when bringing in your groceries or something, someone always needed to hold it or you had to put oh, a chair annoying. in it. But 
Turns out I was just really stupid. Not all houses in the US have these, but a lot of the places here in Cincinnati do. And they're basically an extra door outside of the front door or also the back right. door that either has a bug screen in it or glass. Now, when they have a bug screen, I think the main purpose is that you can have your door open for ventilation, but you'll still be protected from bugs flying in. And if you have indoor pets, right. for example, it also keeps them inside while still being able to look out the door and smell and hear things outside. When it comes to the storm doors, with glass in them, according to the internet, they're simply there to help protect your main door from rain, ice, and snow. Made sense. Especially so those your guys' weather. seven additional things that I had never seen before I came to the US. Now, of course, I want to know from you. That was a pretty good video. Enjoyed that. You guys definitely got to let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I'll be checking them out, responding and stuff. So make sure you do that. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I'm live every single day on Twitch.tv forward slash If you guys want to check me out over there, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.